Welcome to the Bourbon Van. I'm Phil. I'm Julie. It's a 12-year tasting. That is fun to say. Well, I was at the liquor store recently, and I asked for something reasonably priced that maybe I hadn't tried before, something that was maybe flying under the radar. And the fella at the liquor store directed me to this bottle, Black Saddle 12 Year Aged Bourbon. All I know about this bottle is that I've walked by it a million times. It looks very generic on the shelf, and that's about it. It's 90 proof, aged 12 years, sourced from Kentucky by a company in California. Oh, that's funny because I was thinking as you were talking, Montana, Texas, <laughs> where where is this baby from? <laughs> California by way of Kentucky yeah. is my, my best guess. Here's the thing. For 12-year aged bourbon at 90 proof, $45 is the price tag. I like that. That's not bad, right? Yeah, not too bad. Because even Russell's Reserve 10, I've started seeing that around 38 39 over $40 in some places. So $45 for 12-year aged whiskey, not too shabby. Well, got it home, gave it a try, and it hits my palate like Barton. I think uh-huh. that this is a 12-year aged Barton product. I did see one other review of this bottle where they thought perhaps it was Four Roses. I didn't get huh. a Four Roses vibe from this at all. And the only other 12-year aged Barton product that I have is one that I'm not super fond of, and it's 1792 aged 12 years. Mm-hmm. We've tried this on multiple occasions. In my opinion, it's a little bitter, maybe even over oaked. It doesn't thrill my palate, and mm-hmm. it's very highly pursued out there. Not quite unicorn status, but I've only ever seen one bottle of it, and I bought it. <laughs> yeah. So that should tell you something. And so I thought, let's put these two against each other blind. That way you get a proper tasting. Mm-hmm. You get a blind head-to-head. Yeah, maybe maybe there's a little sneaker in there. Maybe a little sneaker there. And possibly a recommendation for something that could go on your shelf because we know that the Black Saddle is out there. I don't know that it's readily available, but I've seen it in multiple states at Total Wine. I have seen it available online for ordering. So this is gonna be our 12 year showdown. I'm not gonna call it a Barton showdown because we don't know for sure that Black Saddle is Barton. One way or another, we're gonna taste these side by side, see which one we like better and we'll let you know. And if they don't taste similar, you can just throw some Four Roses on the table. Right, we'll try that. (laughs) So these are similarly priced? Yeah, very close. The Black Saddle we got for $45. The 1792 aged 12 years we got for $50. No sales tax here in Oregon. So absolutely. The 1792 is 96.6 proof. The Black Saddle is 90 proof. So that's the only real difference here. Mm -hmm. The the color looks exceedingly similar. I think we need to get to the tasting. Smells like oak, caramel. Ooh. Smells like bourbon. Vanilla. Absolutely. The, the oak is nice here. There's that cherry undertone. There's definitely some fruitiness. This nose really reminds me of some of the Cal Farm stuff, Sam Houston stuff. It is very pleasant. Mm-hmm. Nice and sugary. It's got all of the elements that you want. There's no harsh ethanol proofiness to the nose. It's just really lovely. Yeah, whatever's in this glass, very, very inviting. On to glass number two. Mm-hmm. Well, that's pretty similar. There's a little more spice on this glass, I think. There is, in that first second, I got like a hint of, almost like a mineral. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, a little little limestone, mineral, mm-hmm. something going on here. Yeah. That's different than glass one. But it does have a nice fruit note. There is some oakiness in there. You know me, I like to go back and forth. Yeah, same here. These are pretty similar. Yeah, this definitely is a bit sweeter. Yeah. This one is maybe a little bit drier, spicier. It's gonna be interesting to see where that balance lies on the palate. Yeah. Let's find out. Cheers. Cheers. It drinks a bit warmer than 96 proof, but it kind of goes away right away. Like it was hot on my first sip and then like a few moments later I was like, mm, it's gone. Yeah, there was a tiny bit of a proof bite that dissipates really quickly. A lot of sugar, a lot of oak, very sweet. I don't get well-aged bitterness here from Mm -mm. whatever this is. This is very easy to sip, very lovely, sugary, a little bit of cherry there, some candy, sort of cherry fruit candy. The nose follows through with the palate. I would agree with that. Yeah, oak, sugar, I got a cherry note, sugary. Pleasant. Did I say sugary twice? You can keep saying it because that's... (laughs) Because it is a little bit sweet. I mean, it's dry and oaky, but also sweet. 
Yeah, I whatever is in this glass would appeal, I think, to mm -hmm. most whiskey drinkers. The mouthfeel, a little oily, not overly oily. It doesn't stick around for an eternity, right. but it's a nice sip. Whatever this is, I actually am really enjoying it. This is a great way to start off this tasting. Yeah, it's got great flavor. I agree. It's not There's not too much of a finish there. Mm -hmm. It is giving me a, a nice warmth, but not overpowering. Uh -huh. I, I like it. I like it too. Okay, there you go. Glass one. We like it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on to glass number two. It's definitely a different flavor profile. This is funny because I don't know which one's which, obviously. I haven't drank either of these. Yeah. Or, and if I have, it's been a long time. That one tastes a bit Tennessee to me. There was Interesting. It, yeah, we the, did say I mineral, mineral and limestone. On, yeah, on the nose. And I got a little bit of nuttiness that usually comes through in some of the Tennessee brands. Which could be funny if it's like the <laughs> 1792. <laughs> well, this one definitely didn't hit my palate as being too hot. It, mm -mm. it is a little bit spicier like we thought on the nose. You're right about the minerality that's coming through here on the on the finish, certainly. The palette is a little weird to me on this one. It doesn't, it's not as satisfying. I, I it, it almost has something salty about it. Mm -hmm. The prevailing flavor, this is going to sound crazy, is like chewing pink bubble gum in a shoe closet. Like an like old... Like a brand new shoe? Like they're new shoes? Or are they stinky like, shoes? Think like... Panel, like wood panel walls. Oh, okay. Like old timey. A cabin or something. Maybe, or like. From the 70s. A yeah, basement was, from the 70s. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what it is. There's a dusty mustiness to it, and it's. Yeah. It's not all that inviting of a flavor, and maybe that's just because we're following something that was very, very sweet. Mm -hmm. It's not a spicy balance that I'm getting. It's more of a not super inviting flavor profile, and I've only had one sip, so I'm going to go back to it, but right <laughs> off the bat, it's not my favorite. Yeah, and I've had multiple sips, and just because I'm, I'm trying to find more, I'm not getting any oakiness on this. I'm not getting any sugar. It's really a... Um, I don't want to say weird, because I actually think like when I say things are weird, that's a positive for me. <laughs> um, I think I was just expecting something sweet to hit at some point. There's nothing sweet about this sip. I am getting a little bit of minerality on it. I was expecting like an oakiness or maybe some sort of leather. I mean, I don't know what it is, but I don't know. I was expecting a little bit something else. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that you get a lot of what you get in glass one here flavor-wise, but a little subdued. I actually do think that there's leather here. There is an aging here. You, you definitely get some dull, muted, sort of... I hesitate to keep using bitter because I don't know if that's the word. It, musty. There's, yeah. nothing, there's nothing There's nothing. fresh in that glass, certainly. I, I got some sugar notes on... I think I'm at least on the fourth sip. I'm taking baby <laughs> sips here, but I because I want... I don't know if I'm just trying to compile the sips on top of each other to try to find those flavors. If this was a head-to-head, -head, I know which one I'm moving forward with, even though I haven't gone back. But yeah. it, I, I just want to figure this one out a little bit more. Yeah, I'm going to go back the other way now mm -hmm. because I actually do want to know if, if it changes the yeah, taste. Yeah, I'm always of, curious. Yeah. I don't know if I like that one. I, I don't know if I do either. I'm not saying I don't like it. I just am saying, like, I don't like it enough at this point to to be glad it's on my shelf. <laughs> to it's, drink. Like, I'm going to have to drink it. Glass one, when we were tasting it, I was thinking, wow, daily drinker material. It's yeah. very pleasant. Glass two, I'm thinking, what's the special occasion or the time when I would actually reach for this mm -hmm. bottle? Because it's not giving me that nice satisfaction, that sippable, enjoyable don't have to think about it to find yeah. flavors. I think we're both finding the same thing in glass two. We're working hard to find flavors, but we're not necessarily finding what we're looking for. This matchup kind of makes me think like, I wish I had like four bowls in front of me. Some nuts, so, like salty peanuts, <laughs> um, some gummy bears, Ooh. some chocolate, and I don't know what's in the fourth bowl. But Pretzels, you love pretzels. Oh, pretzels, right? And then <laughs> to see, like, if you match up something that's kind of dry, do you want, like, the salted peanuts, or would the strawberry or cherry gummy bear bring out flavors that you were missing? I know that's so silly, but it, this one does kind of make me want to see how it changes. We should get some gummy bears, I think, either way. Is that the big takeaway? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let, let's go to glass number Here one. Here we go. 
a pink bubblegum note on the nose of glass number one now. Well, that's interesting that there is more of glass two in glass one now. Tobacco, <laughs> maybe a little leather, some pink bubblegum showing up there too. Even a little bit of spice. And we've cleansed our palates. We took some time here. Still interesting. I, I would be amazed to learn that whatever that whichever one of these the black saddle is i would be amazed to learn that it's not barton i think it i don't mm. see i don't see it being anything else especially with this tasting yeah these are so similar one of them is bringing more sweetness and satisfaction in my opinion and yeah. i do think that this could be a palate preference especially for those of you who don't like a ton of sweetness on your mm-hmm. bourbon one of them is not bringing that sweetness it's again i don't think it's more balanced it's just a muted mustiness that's Again, interesting, but not what I'm craving. So I didn't particularly like the first sip coming back on glass number one. There was something a little in the sip. There's a, a there's a bit of a heat to it. There's yeah. a bite, certainly. But then my second sip, I was getting nice brown sugar. Mm. Yeah, it was nice. That was nice. It was nice. Nice. <laughs> Trying glass two again? Mm. Okay. Not my favorite. I'm satisfied to say that I have a choice here. Yeah. If you do. Well, yeah, I just said that I just took the sip of glass two as not my favorite. So. <laughs> Are you mov- you're moving ahead with glass one? Yeah, I am. Um, I, you know, the, the sweetness, even with that like little bit of bite that I got in the, the first sip out and the first sip back. Yeah. The fla- I just like the flavors of glass number one better. I think so too. And I actually don't mind the bite. I, yeah. I like a bit of a snap on my bourbon especially yeah. when it's very sweet mm-hmm. because I find that that offsets it in a, in a very balanced way so right. I do think that glass one is still sort of a cherry candy sugar bomb mm-hmm. but glass two doesn't hit my palate really at all here right. so I don't know much about uh, Barton the flavor profile though I think every time that I have it I'm, it's a hit or miss for me I would agree with that but I don't think this tastes like four roses to me I completely agree with yeah. you on that I, I don't see any, either of them yeah I don't see any way that these are not Barton Barton we've said it in the past gum and nuts yeah. peanuts and pink bubble gum I'm finding that on both of both. these yeah. but there's leather here there is tobacco here there is more oak on glass one certainly but there's oak on both of them vanilla yeah. There's a lot to like here on the table. One of them hit our palates, the other one didn't. Let's find out what we got here. We're both gonna go forward with glass number one, which is B on the roster. B, okay. And that's the 1792 12 year. Wow. Wow, so unexpected because yeah. not something that's hit our palates in the past, but here today. It, it showed up. It absolutely did. And the black saddle, I think if you like the 1792 profile, mm-hmm. and if you like something that's a, a little, little bit drier. A little drier on yeah. the bitter side. Muted flavors that are not overly sweet. I do think that that would appeal to some people. Mm-hmm. But definitely the 1792 12 year today won out. Yeah. I would say handily for you and me. I could see how to the greater bourbon audience, one of these is going to appeal yeah. to everybody. They're easy drinking, flavorful, sweet. And uh, I'm a little bummed to see the Black Saddle not pull it off because I was kind of looking at it like, wow, here's your new daily drinker. It can replace Russell's Reserve 10. I know. I don't see it doing that. I know you've been raving about it all week. I was excited for today. I kind of thought that it come charging ahead. And up until you said which glass it was, I was like, I think this is going to be the winner. Like, I kind of yeah. feel like the, the wind's out of my sails, but also glad that the other one did so well. Yeah, absolutely. And if you can't find 1792 age 12 years, I think this is a valid replacement mm-hmm. because it is more readily available. It is a little bit cheaper. And I hope that you can find it out there and let us know what you think of it because it is a really under the radar bottle. But the reason that our friend at the liquor store suggested it mm-hmm. is because he said that when he runs out of it, people get very upset. They don't buy something else. They leave the store. Oh, really? And they will come back when they have it in stock. It nice. is obviously an under the radar bottle that people are seeking out and enjoying. Mm-hmm. And so what we like to do is shine a light on those and make them really hard to get. <laughs> So sorry if that's what happens here. Yeah. But no, I think the 1792 age 12 years definitely put on a little bit of a show today. And it did. It showed us that we've been wrong about that bottle in the past. And I'm excited. I'm glad that we like it because I've been avoiding that bottle and I won't do it again. Well, I just tend to never drink anything 1792. And <laughs> I've had three different instances of it just this year alone. And I've liked them all. And I'm like, why do I avoid it? <laughs> Guess we're not. Guess we're not. Not anymore. And 
There's not much left to say. Let us know if you've had 1792, 12 years aged, or Black Saddle. Which one do you prefer? Mm-hmm. But a 12 year show, Don, I feel like we got our money's worth today <laughs> from wherever we are. To wherever you are. Cheers. Cheers. It almost has a scotchy note to it. Oh, neat. Thank you.